Mac and Mac on Bird Street 65, and we're lucky enough to get Matt Verdram, national football writer for Sports Illustrated, here to jump in with us. Good to see you, Matty V. Thanks for hopping in. Here's where I'm going first with you. Kind of a position where they're at kind of question. Who's feeling worse about themselves this morning? The Jacksonville Jaguars or the Buffalo Bills? Oh, my, it's got to be Buffalo. I mean, it has to be. I know that I know that Jacksonville got beat by 31 points, but they're six and three. They're fine. They right. I'm I'm just talking about the effect of their loss this weekend. Which is more painful? Which is more draining? Which has more of a no, continuing right. effect? The 31 point beat down, right. or you had the, the game in your hand and you just say, "Hey, your place, take it from me." The, the Bills, because if you're Jacksonville, as much as that loss stinks, I mean, I think that's one of those games you just kind of walk away from it going, hey, look, we, we got our tails kicked, period. And we got to fix it, and we, we can correct a million things. The Bills was like this every week with, with undisciplined plays, with poor coaching. I mean, that game last night, how the hell did you have 12 guys on the field on that field goal attempt when you knew that whole defensive drive? Hey. We might need to have the field goal block team come out here. And then the Broncos, first down, they kneel the ball. You call timeout. Second down, they kneel the ball. You call timeout. No one's going over this on the sideline. Like, hey, guys, we know the 11, right? Like, we know who's – it wasn't one of these things where, hey, Denver completes a miracle ball down the field and, and everybody's in a fire drill mode. You knew for five minutes you had to go out there. You knew 12 guys on the field. That game, they're now five and five. That game is of catastrophic proportions to Buffalo. I do not think they will make the playoffs. Their schedule's way too hard. Yeah. Losing to both the teams to play next Monday night. Uh, and that should do it. That'll take care of Buffalo for the year. Yeah, here in Philadelphia, we talked about that murderous row since the schedule came out, but everything changes. Buffalo is part of that murder. Well, they don't look that difficult right now, to be honest. Uh, the reckless play. At what point, Matt, did people start looking at Sean McDermott in this situation? The window closed. We know the playoff loss. I mean, the 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 management of the end of that game was yeah. historically bad. And you're just talking about how do you have 12 people on the field? It's a little bit of a theme. I don't want to call it a theme, but end of game situations. Yeah. One of the strengths here in Philadelphia with Nick Sirianni, I love Jody. Jody knows. I love CEO coaches because I think the game is so big when it comes to game management. If you're doing something else, and remember Sean ran Leslie Frazier out of there, if you're doing something else, you get bogged down, you're thinking about it, mistakes happen, 12 men on the field, bad end-of-game situation management. Is Sean McDermott on the hot seat? I, yeah, I mean, I think he has to be, which is weird because he's just got an extension. But, um, you know, those coaching contracts and a lot yeah. of have out clauses in them and different things. So it's always kind of hard to tell um, exactly. Jimbo Fisher. You know, they're paying 75 million. Jimbo Fisher. If I was Jimbo Fisher, I would have tried to be fired. Yeah. Yeah. Give me 76 million in the beach. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, yeah, it, it, he's got to be on the hot seat. Quite honestly, right now, everybody in Buffalo, I think it, to some degree, other than Allen, of course, is on the hot seat. I mean, you're in a position where you're five and five. You're probably not making the playoffs. I mean, realistically, yeah. they have five. Not only do they have five losses, they're all in the conference. Yeah. Like, you're looking at they maybe can lose one more game. They still got to go to Philly, go to Kansas City, go to Miami, go to the Chargers, play the Cowboys at home. I mean, they're losing one more game. They can't beat New England. They can't beat Denver. So, yeah, I think he's on the hot seat. Brandon Bean, I don't think is. But I got to tell you, if you really look at Brandon Bean's record the last four years, who have they drafted? I like Kincaid. That, that's about the extent of the list. I mean, they have not drafted well. They have a lot of old, expensive players on that team. They have a cap crunch next year. This is going to be painful the next couple of years here for Buffalo. I mean, I, you're never going to rebuild with Allen in the middle of his prime, but like you're going to have to do a pretty serious retooling on the fly. It is. Can I just say something, though, Matt, about yeah. Josh Allen? He's incredible. Nobody questions the talent. I mean, off the charts. But he's reckless. Yeah. At, at what point is it fair to say he's too reckless? He's too reckless. I, I mean, 
personally, I've, I've hit that point about a month ago. I mean, I've written that multiple times on SI, but the fact that, look, at some point, if you're an elite quarterback, you can't make the mistakes he makes every game. You just can't do it. I mean, you take last night, for example, and the first interception is not his fault. Gabe Davis, despite the fact that NFL receivers at this point wear flypaper on their hands, like can't catch, ball goes right through his hands, gets intercepted. Okay, fine. That second pick right before the end of the half, you just cannot throw that football. I don't, you can throw it 10, 10 yards over his head. You can throw it into the stands. You can take a sack, whatever. You're deep in your own territory with 30 seconds left. You cannot throw an interception. And that ball is completely on Allen. I mean, that that's a coverage where you know Denver's sagging with the underneath guy. You know those over-the-top over, over the top guys are going to drive on these out routes, these deeper routes. You just cannot throw that ball. And it cost them three points in the game that they lost by two. And we see him do it over and over. They lost the Jets game because of Josh Allen. The first play of the New England game, he threw an interception that led to points. I mean, these things are not one-offs. They happen all the time. To me, he's not on the level right now of Mahomes or Burrow when he's right or Hurts. He's not. He's not. I mean, he's not one of those guys. He's more right now to me. I think on my quarterback rankings this week, I have him eighth. Like, he's very good, but he's not He's not great. You can't be great when you have more picks than Mac Jones this year. Sorry. Right. It's, I mean, he is leading the league with 11 picks. It's been brutal. I uh, we debated this before the season ever started. Maybe with you here on the show, John and I certainly have the comparison between the AFC and the NFC. And everyone I knew thought, well, the AFC is better. How much better is the question? They got more, you know, better quarterback. The rank. The NFC this week made a statement for me that maybe there isn't a difference at all. All the key teams, if you look at Kansas City and Philadelphia is the two best teams, which I think you should. Yeah. They didn't play. They play each other this week. But NFC, Lions win, 49ers win, Cowboys win. Shoot, even put the Vikings into that mix. They win. AFC, Bills lose, Ravens lose, Jaguars lose. All teams we thought of as, as if not playoff locks. I thought least. Baltimore was the best team in football coming into the week. So I – uh and they get the beat. On them. Yeah. Is there a, is there any difference between the AFC and the NFC, or is this as balanced a league as you've seen in a while? It's pretty balanced. I think the AFC is probably a little deeper in terms of like like the NFC. What I'm, I'm driving at is like the NFC in the playoffs. Like Minnesota, it's a nice story. Minnesota is going to get annihilated in the in the wild card. You're not a Josh Dobbs guy. <laughs> I'm a Josh Dobbs guy in terms. Of it's a great story. Yeah. I'm not a Josh guy, Dobbs guy in San Francisco in January. No, no I am not. <laughs> um, and the NFC South is a tire fire. Like that's another one of these. Like you know, Dallas will probably get the you know the four seed and just and just blow the doors off New Orleans. So in that sense, I think the AFC is better because I, I don't know that there's anybody in the AFC that you look at who's going to make the playoffs and just go that team is just no chance in hell of of winning a playoff game, but. The top of the conference, yeah. I mean, look, you could argue Philly and San Francisco. Um, you know, the Chiefs are of that quality. Is there anybody else of that quality in the AFC? I mean, maybe when the Bengals are right, maybe if Baltimore is right. I'm not a big Baltimore guy. I just always feel like I've seen this movie before with Baltimore. But you can certainly make the argument. I don't know that Jacksonville or Miami is a team that I look at and think can go to the Super Bowl. I think they can win a playoff game. I think on, on their best day, they can be a thorn in anybody's side. But can they win the Super Bowl? Can they get to the Super Bowl? I, I doubt it. Uh, Buffalo, we just talked about, I don't think going to make the playoffs. Houston yeah. is a real fun up-and-coming team. Houston reminds me of Jacksonville last year, where you looked at them and said, really up-and-coming team, good team, but are they going to go to Arrowhead second week of January and win that game? Probably not. So, yeah, I, I think right now in the NFL, I'm still on the Bengals. I still think that the Bengals are, are a threat. To me, the last four teams standing last season are the best four teams this year. Yeah, probably as we stand here. But to Matt's point, I mean, right now, today, as we speak, if the playoffs started, Cincinnati's not in the playoff. Oh. Buffalo's not in the playoff. The Chargers, Jody's Jets, and obviously that has to do with the quarterback. That was going to be a really good team if, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't get hurt. When you look at the NFC, Minnesota's the seventh seed right now. Then you have Tampa, Washington, Atlanta, 
Green Bay. So I do think the AFC is deeper. No question about it. Um, um, and then you have, you know, maybe Pittsburgh is in the playoffs right now. They're not as good as they look. Uh, no, they were and, getting and as you mentioned, that, yeah. Houston, CJ Stroud's a great story, but great step forward. But I don't think they're a great team. But I, I, I think it's fair to say the AFC is deeper. Um, now, let's talk about your your wheelhouse, those Kansas City Chiefs, because I'm a little bit concerned offensively. What's going on? And and you think about a team with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, and you're usually not worried about offense if you right. got those two parts of the equation. But if you go all the way back to their Denver game, that was bad. Yeah. The 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 yeah. inaugural Frankfurt game, they they didn't really they weren't they aren't explosive at, at all, and then they're going on the bye week. What's going on with that offense? Just is it just as simple as the receivers aren't good enough? Besides outside it's, receivers, no. You know what? So this is kind of the, the funny thing about the Chiefs. I think that nationally has been completely missed, completely missed. And if you actually watch them, and I've watched every snap of them probably twice over this year, um, their receivers are not great. But you have Travis Kelsey, who's still playing like Travis Kelsey. And you have Rasheed Rice, who's actually a really good young receiver. He's a rookie this year. He's been excellent for them. Their receiving core is not anything to write home about. Don't get me wrong. Like, that certainly is part of the issue. I mean, they after those two guys, you start talking about like Marcus Valdez-Scantling and Justin Watson. And guys were, like, fine in a complimentary role. But, like, that's pretty much what they're good for. Their biggest problem is you turn the ball over nonstop. And I'm pretty sure, at least going into this week, now that they have the bye, it probably isn't true anymore. Going this week, they've taken the most penalty yardage of any team in football. And it's mm-hmm. almost all offensive. Like, they don't take many penalties on defense. They are, they are this year, you can make a real argument to the best defense in football. They have been phenomenal defensively. They can, any way you want to play, they can play you on defense. We can get into that later. But offensively, they are a wreck with penalties and turnovers. They have 17 turnovers this year. They cannot stop fumbling the ball, throwing picks they shouldn't throw. Like Mahomes has gotten away with some of that nationally. He hasn't been to Josh Allen levels, but by his standards, he has been very careless with the ball this year. Um, my my whole thing with them is, look, if they can just stop beating themselves, they're fine, even with these receivers. Because in games where they haven't beaten themselves, they've racked up over 400 yards on offense, no problem. They've scored plenty of points. They have a very good one-two punch at running back led by Pacheco. They have all these guys, uh, and the line is very good. The line is an excellent offensive line. They've, they've, they've protected Mahomes. He's gotten the least amount of sacks this year against him. But the turnovers, they only have one game this year where they've not turned the ball over, and that was against Minnesota. It's the only game. They lost that game to Denver that you mentioned, John, because they had five turnovers in that game. And yet, with five turnovers, they were down 14-9 to nine with seven minutes left, and they were getting the ball, and then they muffed a the punt inside their own five-yard line. That was the game. Yeah. Like, they played atrociously in terms of beating themselves, and they're seven and two. So it really does come down to can you just stop beating yourself? And even with the receivers, if they do that, they'll be fine. If uh, they're turning it open as often as you say they are, and I'm sure you're right, how much of it is on Mahomes? Is he taking chances? He's putting the ball up for grabs. You're saying the line's giving him time. Yep. Uh, I sure it can't be all fumbles by guys other than him either fumbling or him throwing it up for grabs. How much of their uh, minus territory, that's what we call turnovers, uh, is on the quarterback? A good amount. I mean, you got you got to put blame on them. Look, they have 17 this year, 17 turnovers. They have 10 interceptions, and, and two of those came from Gabbard when they were 41 nothing on the Bears. But – as a team, they've thrown 10 picks. They've, they've also lost seven fumbles. So, I mean, they, they have just done everything they possibly can. It's a lot of fumbles. I mean, they, you know, like I said, at the end of last week, I believe they were leading the league. Now, now they're to a point where six teams have as many or more turnovers in them, Buffalo and, and, and the, the Browns among them. Um, but, yeah, the Chiefs, I mean, it's been a big problem. It's been a big problem for them. And Mahomes at times, look, they, they've had a few, kind of like the uh, Gabe Davis interception last night where Mahomes just hit a guy right in his hands. And the ball, you know, Kadarius Tony kind of famously week one, the ball right through his hands and turned on pick six. There's been a few like that for Mahomes. But he's had five or six picks this year. He's just throwing the ball right at somebody because he's trying to force the ball down the field. And a lot of his picks have come 30, 40 yards downfield. 
Some of them on third down where you're like, okay, look, if you're going to throw a pick, that's probably the place to do it. A little bit of an arm punt. Right. But they they have not been consistent at being able to avoid these – these. frankly, a lot of them are pretty avoidable turnovers. I mean, it's not as though, uh, you know, he's been pressured into them. I mean, these have been throws where he's had some time and he's trying to force a play. It'll be interesting with both the Chiefs and the Eagles coming out of the bye week. You know, these teams are smart teams, well-coached. They're going to self-scout. How much of these issues that both teams have had can you fix? But I think to, to really, to the point of them being the two best teams in the league, I mean, neither one of these teams is playing to capacity, and one of them's eight and one, the other one's seven and two. I mean, most teams, you play poorly, you're the Bills right now, right? Like the Chiefs and the Eagles, their fan bases are ripping their hair out of their heads, and they're a combined 15 and three. <laughs> so it goes to show the talent level on those teams. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's a good point. Style points for both of them haven't been there, but they keep oh. winning games, which is uh, last time I checked what it's all about. Uh, let's talk about that defense. You know, Sp- Steve Spagnuolo is one of those guys, man. He has been forever. I don't know. He's revered in Philadelphia. He got here with Andy Reid in 99, and I believe he left in – 06, 07, somewhere, somewhere around there. So it's been a long time and people keep talking about him. They love him. Uh, King of the third down. Um, is he doing something differently this year? Why have they taken the next step defensively? He's not. I mean, he. the only thing maybe they're doing a little differently is last year, I guess, you know, it's pretty noted throughout the year, and especially going to the Super Bowl, they had a million rookies on defense last year. I mean, they, yeah. they were playing secondary. literally yeah. four starting secondary players that were rookies last season. I mean, it was it was incredible. They had, you know, they had uh, Carl Loftus up front and Chanel at the second level. And all those guys have ranged now from being a superstar level player in McDuffie to a star player in Carl Loftus to the rest of them all being really good. So – you now know the system, all those guys, that half dozen, and they added a Menahu up front. They added Drew Tranquil at linebacker, who was going to kind of spot start for Bolton at times, and then Bolton got hurt, and Tranquil's been as good as Bolton. But he's been unbelievable. They have Mike Edwards, who they brought him for the Bucks. There's a third safety, and with Spags, they like to play a lot of three safety looks, and so Edwards has been very good for him. Um, look, they rank fourth in yardage against, second in points against, fifth in passing yardage against. They've had two games this year where they haven't given up 100 passing yards. I mean, they just – they are relentless up front. They are um, – they're a team that they they blitz, but they don't always have to. They get home with four constantly. Um, I mean, they their, their pressure rate's top five. They're top three in sacks. Uh, they, they, they are – I believe they have the fewest missed tackles in the NFL, fewest yards after catch allowed in the NFL. They, they are – their biggest strength is they don't have a weakness. They can play any way you want to play. They can play big. They can play smaller. They can play in base. They can play in dime and whatever you want to do. And so with that freedom, Spagnolo, as Eagles fans know from his days there, like they will, they'll spin the wheel with their coverages. They'll play anything. They'll, they'll play zone. They play man. They play any variation you want. They, I mean, they are so exotic defensively. You know, I do an all 22 piece every week at SI and I'll sit down and watch film of these teams. And a lot of these teams, it's the same coverage almost every play. You know, they'll sit in quarters. They'll sit in coverage. I mean, it's the in, same. Including uh, including the opposition that's coming to Kansas City this week. <laughs> the Eagles yeah. are a team that, yes, they will sit in a certain. The Chiefs are one of those teams where you watch them in every play. You have no that's idea. I like, I like the Spagnolos. I like the, yeah. the Floreses of the world who, yeah. who I mean, mix it, things up. and It's, and it's like Anarumo and Cincy. Yeah, Anarumo, yeah. You know, they will. You know, and the Chiefs, one thing they do. I genuinely think Baron Avian football this year, they disguise their coverages where they will they will put a safety at the line of scrimmage and on the snap the guy bails 30 yards and then you know and then Karloftis drops and they blitz a linebacker and a corner. I mean, it's just you have to be prepared with them for a lot of stuff as an opposing offense. They they will throw everything at you. All right. So let me ask you about the Chiefs offense in a similar way. Doing something unexpected having the guts to change it on the fly, whatever. Coming into this game, we watch Eagles every single play of every single game. You watch the Chiefs more so than we do. Who's going to be the team that uses hurry-up successfully? I don't think of either one of these teams as a hurry-up team. 
that they do it dictated by yeah. score and, and uh, where you are in the game and everything else. But just as a change of pace, catch the other team off guard. I don't think of either one of them that way. Is there a chance one of the two does that this weekend? I don't think, I don't think so either. I don't. I mean, you know, here's, here's one thing to consider for this. I don't know how you guys feel. Maybe you'll feel like this is dumb, but I, I, I truly believe this might happen in this game. Normally, get an AFC team and an NFC team. You're not holding anything back, right? Because it's like, well, who cares? We're not going to see that team. What does it matter? They're not a team we'll see in the playoffs. <laughs> I don't know that either one of these teams is going to show a whole hell of a lot. Empty the point. bucket? You're telling me neither like, one of them is empty in the bucket this you know, week, Ram? I, I think there's a very real chance that both of these teams are looking at each other going, you know what? Might not be the only time we play this year. Yeah. And both teams are in the one seed. Both teams are in very good position in their divisions. I wonder if this is a game a little bit where both Reed and Sirianni go, listen, we'd love to win. That'd be great. But we're not showing anything of real note in this game. Like now, obviously, you have to take from the Super Bowl, but you know, teams are different, teams are different every year, different coordinators, stuff like that. I wonder in this game if you get a little bit of, you know what? Not gonna show our best third down play here. Not gonna show our best play in the red zone. Because right now, if you had to pick who's gonna be in the Super Bowl, wouldn't it be these two teams? I mean, wouldn't it have yeah. to be? Right? Like, yeah. so how dumb would you feel if you show every single thing in this game and then in two months you're like, great, we just put the entire Super Bowl on tape for the other team? <laughs> I have a feeling, I think it's going to be a very good game. I think it'll be a very entertaining game. I don't think it's going to be a game where both coaches are just laying out an A plus game plan is worth the stuff. I really don't. I think it's going to be a game where it's going to be, hey, look, we're trying everything we can to win, but we're not showing those 10 plays that we think will really work against you if we need them come February. Maybe I'm nuts, but that's my thought. On it. Yeah, I'm kind of torn on that. Typically, I would agree with you, Matt. AFC games, inter, interconference games aren't as important as conference games, but this right. one's a little bit different in the standpoint you might see the opponent again down the road. But, man, the Eagles know how important – uh, home field advantage is during the playoffs. The Chiefs at Arrowhead obviously know how sure. important it is. Um, Andy coming off a bye. Um, it's it's ironic, you know, Andy came into Kansas City when Nick was on the staff with Romeo Cornell that finished 2-14, yeah. and 14, and obviously Nick was out with the door, understandably so. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, I think it was the second year Nick, called up Andy and said, dude, what's your secret on the bye week? And um, Andy was nice enough to give him some um, uh, advice and tell him to go to New York, I think, on vacation or <laughs> something of that nature. But um, I, I, Nick's a competitive guy, man. He did not like losing that Super Bowl. The Eagles thought they had the better football team. Um they thought they beat themselves, yada, yada, yada. A lot of teams think that when they lose. But I think it's a little bit more than a normal interconference game, at least for one side. Maybe not the Chiefs. I don't know. But for the Eagles. No, I, I think Jen, you're right. I mean, there's, de there's definitely – look, these are two great teams. I mean, there there's definitely a pride factor, number one. Sirianni was fired from the Chiefs. Reed was fired from the Eagles. I mean, there is definitely a level of, like, you want to win this football game. Don't get me wrong. I think both teams, they want to win. I, is it probably more personal for Philly? Yeah. I mean, after last year, sure. Sure it is. But I guess my point is, if you're the Eagles or the Chiefs in this game, there has to be a little bit in your back of your mind, like, we might see this team again. And so do you just lay it all out? Maybe you do. Maybe you say, look, you know, we want to make a statement in this game. We want to show, you know, we want to win this game by two touchdowns and we want to prove a point. Maybe also feel like, look, if we don't play our A plus game plan, we're going to get blown out by the other side. You know, if they decide. So, th I mean, look, that that is all in play. I'm not saying for sure it's going to happen. My point is just, I do think you consider the idea you might see each other again. I remember last year when the Bengals and Kansas City played in Cincinnati in, in the regular season. The Chiefs, if you go back and watch that tape, which I know, I mean, why would you at this point? The Chiefs showed nothing on defense. Spagnolo played a cover two shell the entire game. The entire game. They didn't, they didn't change. They didn't blitz once. They sat there the whole game. And then they saw him in the AC Championship game. And I don't think they played cover two once the entire night. They blitzed all night long. They played a bunch of different coverages. It'll be interesting. I think this is a fascinating game. 
because both teams off the bye, you're going to have new wrinkles. You're going to have some different personnel groupings. Of course, the Eagles have to adjust now. They don't have Goddard this week, so that matters. I mean, you're going to have to change some things on offense. Um, I would expect the Chiefs, who have been playing their, like all their receivers quite a bit in a rotation, I think that's going to get shortened and pared down starting this week. So you're going to see some adjustments for sure. I think it's a great game. I, I'm, I'm covering it fresh eye at Arrowhead. I'll be there Monday night. Nice. I can't wait to cover that game. Last one for me, Matty. And uh, this is unfortunately pointing out a potential legal weakness. They think it'll be solved because Bradley Roby will be in the lineup this week. We don't know that yet, but we're assuming that. And they picked him off the scrap heap, and he played a couple of good games for him. He's got all of 50 snaps under his belt, but somehow he's going to cure the ills of the Eagles cornerbacks in the slot, which have not worked good. Who's going to be the key guy coming out of the slot for the Chiefs? We know that Kelsey's Kelsey, and he's going to get mostly safety coverage would be my guess. I don't think the slot corner is going to come much. So it's either big safety. Eagles linebackers aren't great in coverage, so it better be Blankenship or uh, uh, the – safety that they just acquired which means somebody's gonna have to cover one of those chief wide receivers coming out of the slot who's that gonna be who's their biggest threat as a slot wide receiver you know i'd love to give you a straightforward answer jerry they, they put everybody there Every, they just they move just guys I mean, in it'll, and be, out. it'll be mccall hardman one play it'll be rasheed rice the next play it'll be travis kelsey the next play it'll be noah gray who by the way is one player that eagles fans should be somewhat aware of because he is somebody they don't play him a ton but when they do like they'll go they'll throw the ball downfield to him They'll throw the ball 30, 35 yards down the field to the back of tight end. And he's, he's athletic enough he can do it. So um, he's somebody to, you know kind of watch. It's like a, 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 a bit player. But, you know, yeah, they'll, they'll rotate in everybody. I mean, Kadarius Tony, you know, who's, who's done nothing this year. But Andy just finished talking about it yesterday, how they basically tried to not play him for eight weeks because he's coming off knee surgery. How much of that is just trying to protect the fact that he hasn't been good this year? I don't know. Um, but that's the one thing. It comes down to up front, period. And just, I mean that that is going to be the game. Beef the on Eagles, beef, always Eagles. does, always does. Up Eagles front, that's up why front. the Eagles build the way they do. And by the way, where they get that from, Matt Andy Reid. <laughs> in that, two, that's in a lot of ways, they're very similar teams. Yeah. I mean, the Chiefs and the Eagles. You can make a real argument if you're talking about both sets of lines. They're the two best sets of lines in the NFL. I mean, both teams up front have all pros all over the place. Whoever wins that battle is going to win. You know, I mean, that that really, I think, is probably it. If the Eagles can't get home again and Mahomes has time, probably plays well. They probably score some points. If the Eagles can protect Hurts as they did in the Super Bowl and he's got all day, he's probably going to throw it all over the place, even with the secondary players that Chiefs have, because the Eagles are just that good. Um, which team wins up front? Whoever does that is walking out of Arrowhead very happy on Monday night. All right, I lied. Now I got one more thing because you went there. Um you're a Chicago guy these days, used to be Kansas City guy, traveling back to Kansas City to cover it this week. Have you done your seven-day forecast yet? Do you know what the weather's going to be like on Monday? Well, tell I me don't. I have no, no idea. Gonna... I no. looked it up last night. Now, this is, again, seven days in advance, so who the hell knows? That's why I didn't look it up, seven yeah. days in advance. No. <laughs> very, very high chance of rain all day on Monday. Uh -huh. From morning through night, not heavy downpours, but chance of showers all 24 hours, which means another slick field between the Chiefs and the Eagles, which <laughs> was unfortunately part of last year's Super Bowl. I was looking for perfect, pristine playing conditions, made the best line and or speed win. We might not even get that on Monday. Now, I hope Jody Mack playing weatherman is 100% friggin' wrong, but that was what I looked up last night. So <laughs> bring bring a slicker with your burden, Ram, when you yeah. go to uh, Kansas City. I know you know how to dress for the weather there, but uh, you might be getting some rain. I'll see you there, Matt, if I can get there. We'll see. All right. Well, hey, you let me know. I'll uh, meet up. I'll get some barbecue. I am going to load up. How's the Kansas City uh, output on the uh, press box? Johnny Mac likes to rate the nothing better than the Cowboys. He's looking forward. He's got that circled on the calendar. The food, Jerry's the food got the fine. best. The food, is, the food is, I would I say. I see that reaction. They have no chance. To, to but I got to tell you, see, but I, I don't care in Kansas City because I go out beforehand yeah. and I yeah. eat so much that I can't possibly eat. That's a good eat point. more at the press box. That's a good right. point. Go he to knows, go he knows Jody the joints Jody. in KC the same way he knows the Chiefs. That's why we have him on. Matty V, always a pleasure, buddy. Thank you very much for jumping in. Take care, Thanks, guys. Man. Safe yep. travels to Kansas City. Matt Verderam from Sports Illustrated here with us on Birds 365. Always a good spot.
Quakey timeout. Come back. Put a bow on the show on Birds 365.